Okay, here's a simple recording of the machine code.c uh, file in the under the hood project. Make sure under the hood project is your main project. So under the hood, uh, if it's not, you can say set as main project. We'll open up this machine code.c, you can see it's a very simple file, just purely to illustrate debugging. We have a single variable, count equal to zero. We have a function initial that we call at the beginning, and then we're just uh, changing the trist b special function register and the lat b special function register, and incrementing the counter. Uh, first, when we start up the debugger, we want to make sure it pauses on the reset vector, so we can go tools, options, embedded, and you can see down here reset and debug startup it's halted on the reset vector so instead of main so make sure you just change that also make sure I forgot to say that your debug tool is your ICD tree over here in the dashboard area of the left part of the screen if it's not go to properties by clicking this icon and change to ICD tree and apply Then when we start the debugger, just by simply clicking debug main project, you can see down here on the right hand side that it's 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 a uh, well we'll see in a minute it's building it first of all so it builds it first so we don't have to build. It's downloading it now to the board, programming it, and now the target is reset and you can see the debugger is halted. It's halted at the reset vector. Uh, we can view the program memory by going, we can look at the dis disassembly first of all if you like, so debugging, output, disassembly, listing file, so that's just the listing file. We can go window, debugging, uh, sorry, pick memory views, program memory, and there's the program, there's the program memory, and you can see that the debug arrow here is halted on the reset, on the reset vector. Uh, these other, uh, we can close some of these here. But these other windows can be opened by clicking Window, Pick Memory Views. There's the SFRs. There's the file registers, which is uh, the RAM. SFRs is also in the RAM, but you know they're just shown in special windows specifically for the SFRs. So, for example, down here at the bottom, we can see the SFRs only and I've just discovered we can arrange them individually or by peripheral it's just a way of reorganizing them uh, I don't see the memory the file register here so we open the file registers uh, window here it is here now this is uh, the RAM address over here it's a 12-bit address so this is address this byte here is address 0 it's all organized by bytes address 1, address 2, address 3 uh, the count variable, if we just put the cursor over it, hopefully, it show out of scope. Mm. When we step into it, it'll tell us what the address of the count variable is. We'll come back to that in a moment. And so, I, why I said that is because I think the address count variable will probably be in one of these first locations here in the first bank, probably address 0, 1, 2, or 3, for example. And we'll be able to see it changing as we count plus plus here. The special function register are all at the very top of RAM or bank 15. So here, up here, all the special function registers. For example, if you go to SFRs, you can see F. These are the addresses in RAM, and these are the same addresses. And it's just shown us the values in the special function registers. So it's just the view of the special function registers is probably clearer here because we can also see the the name associated with each location. Okay. Uh, move that up. No, we can. I'll just leave it for a moment. Yikes. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, so there's the two of them beside each other. Now, we can start stepping through the program, and as we step through the program, it might be interesting to watch the, the cursor move as we step through one instruction at a time. So we step. Now, go to 7CCE. So, presumably, that's where the main function starts. No, it does something else before. I'm not quite sure what it's doing here. Move 
move oh it's, yes it's moving zero to the bank select register so it's setting it up to be a bank zero the ram bank zero we'll talk about more about that later uh, then it's going to go to 7ce4 address presumably that's where the main function starts yes it is so here's the program memory address and this is just a line number so we can ignore that this is the opcode the 16-bit instruction this is just a label and this is the assembly at that address 7CE4 so that's the first instruction and you can see that it's moving 0 to the working register and then presumably it's clearing the variables I'm not quite sure what's happening here yet but uh, because it's something to do with count equal to 0 it's moving 0 into working register and then it's clearing the count variable but I'm not sure why it's what this exactly mean PC stack I'll come back and have to investigate that so we step a bit further here's the initial function you can see how the initial function is going to be implemented it's a call to a different address in program memory because the initial function resides at a separate address to the main function so it'll call, jump to this address it'll start stepping through these few uh, instructions if you like the, uh, the one, one line of C may implement in two or three more lines of assembly so in step step you can see it's as it's stepping through one line of C it's stepping through the C but there may be one or two assembly instructions associated with it uh, step and if you were to look down here at the special function registers for example the lat B is here when we step off this instruction we should see the lat B value change and there you go it's at F8AA if we looked over here at F8 A you can see there also with 0 0 okay so F8 A there is 0 the contents is 0 0 or all zeros binary and uh, F8 A where is it gone F8 A there's it there just having this smooth off red so we step through it again go back to the program memory just to show what happens now we're going to return we're coming back from the function to the, the next line in the main function so then here's a no op no operation and then we're on to the next uh, to the next instruction so that's basically moving zero to the working register and then doing the, moving the contents of the working register to the trisp register so in a lot of the cases the working register is sort of a go-between you can't just sometimes you can't just write a value directly to a special function register you move a value into the working register first and then there's an instruction to move the value from the working register to the actual uh, special function register. Okay, uh, if we if we step a bit further, then quickly, here's we're into the into the infinite while loop. You can see as we step through the infinite while loop, the count variable. Let's just watch the file register and just when you take note of which one is incremented. I'm sure this is up here at the top. We're in scope now, so we click over it. We can see that the count variable is address 1, so that's this address here, 0, 0, 1. So this should change now when we increment count by 1. So we step, and there you go, you can see it goes to 1. As we step around again, it goes to 2, 3, 4, etc. Also, look at the program memory and see how an infinite while loop is, is, uh, is implemented. You see we step, step, step. And there's a branch. We branch back to a particular to a particular place. So we are using branch to move back around the loop. Okay. Hopefully that explains uh, a little bit more what's happening internally in the microcontroller.